In this video, we'll create this really cool bus animation, just like in the video of Iman Gaji. And you can see the end result here. I will go over a couple topics, getting the cartoon, animating them, and of course the final touches. As always, you can download this as a template for a small fee in the description down below. And of course, all the assets that I'm using are also in the description. Let's jump into it. Let's look at the animation first. As you can see, the bus comes in. There's some elements at the top that also come in, which I think is really cool. There's also this film grain over it. And of course, as always, it's quite a low frames per second uh, video. And also there's a turbulent displacement. There's a movement in the uh, in the person that's in there. And we have a cool grid at the bottom. I think it's also really cool how this bus is animated in. Basically like going first, like coming into the frame and then going back to the middle. Now to get the cartoon, you can of course create something yourself, but you can also check free pick, which has a lot of free factors that you can use. I really love this side because also the quality is really good. And like I said, it's for free. I was just scrolling through it and look what I found. At the bottom right, and you might be able to spot it, it's the exact same bus. Now I do need a stop sign too. Maybe if we call it a bus stop sign, maybe something like this and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna import them. You can also import by just dragging these files into your After Effects. Just make sure you selected the EPS files because those are factor and then we can change these into mask and shapes. Just right click the layer and then create convert or create shapes from vector layer. Nothing should change because now they changed into shapes and now they're also vector. That means that we can infinitely scale it and it will stay sharp because they will basically be shapes. Now we could even keep the bus stop. I think that's actually a really cool element. For now, I'm just gonna delete everything except the bus stop sign. Best way to do this is to just go through these groups and see which one it is. And that's sometimes a bit hard, but the easiest way is to, or double click, but in a lot of situations that doesn't work, or just select a lot of groups by holding shift and you'll see that you'll have a couple selected. So the bus stop sign must be in here somewhere. So I think it's group 125 till probably maybe group 114. Let's select them all, right click, group shapes. Now it created the group 134. I'm just gonna place that at the bottom and then I'm gonna select everything and delete and there we go. Now before I continue, there's actually something really important. We have our first sponsor of this channel and that's Skillshare. When you are watching this, you're probably really interested in learning new things. And Skillshare is perfect for that. They're the largest online learning community. They have thousands of classes, filmmaking, photography, designing, entrepreneurship, sales, everything. And since it's the new year, I think it's good to invest in yourself and your goals. Now, especially with a new skill, sometimes it's hard to know where to start. And I had this issue myself too. Well, Skillshare has this thing called learning paths and it takes you from zero to hundred in no time. One thing that I get asked a lot in my community is how to price myself. How much can I ask? Is this too much? Or maybe I'm not asking enough. And there's this learning path called pricing and negotiating for creative freelancers. I went through it and I think it answers these questions perfectly. Learning paths are handpicked classes meant to be taken in order. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced and a variety of categories, including design, productivity, creative freelancing, tools and software like Procreate and Blender. The first 500 people that will use the link in the description down below will get a one month for free. Going back to the animation, let's now also separate the bus in the exact same way. Right click, create, create shapes from vector layer. This will probably take a while, but you can also open these files in Illustrator or PhotoP. Just gonna drag the EPS into PhotoP and you'll see all the buses that we uh, can use. Now I'm just gonna delete artboards by pressing backspace, open the background, and then just check which one is which. I think the top one is the one that we want, so we can delete the other ones. Floop. I'm gonna delete that shadow too, uh, we don't need that. And then I'll just click on the group, I'll go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Let's scale it up, something like this, confirm. And then what we can do is we can put a different title here. I will also download this Cartoon Man and I will import this and I will drag this. Make sure that you drag it into the top bar so you can open the file. Let's open the objects. And I think the first one should be fine. You can just copy this by pressing Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows and then pasting it here. Then we have the man, which is nice. I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna double click on the layer and I'm gonna give it a color overlay. Perfect. Then we'll go to transform scale again. We'll scale it and move it a bit to where we want it. Something like here, press enter and then we'll mask it. I'm just gonna zoom in to make sure that I have it aligned well, something like this by using the select and then pressing the mask icon in the bottom right. There we go. 
I'm gonna keep this text, but you can adjust this by just using the text tool. Now, the only thing that I want to do is make sure that this file is not as heavy in our After Effects. We can do that by right-clicking on the layer, convert to smart object. I'm gonna do the same with the bus and then right-clicking again, rasterize, and right-clicking again, rasterize. So we have two layers, one is the man and one is the bus. We can now just save this as a PSD, go into After Effects, import the PSD, and press OK. Let's just open that composition, see if it worked. Great, I'm gonna open this composition. We have two files, I'm just gonna copy this over to our animation. Amazing. First thing I'm gonna do is link the person to the bus, and I'm gonna scale it up like this. And by doing it like this, it's also an easy way to adjust it in Photopea. You can change the colors, you can change the object. Now I'm gonna create the background and I'm gonna do that by uh, making a layer, maybe something like this, okay, dark red. I'm gonna put this below all the other layers. You can even name this by pressing enter and then calling this a background. And now for the grid, it's a really simple grid. So we can just go to layer new solid. I'm gonna give it the color black, okay, okay. And we'll add a grid to this, perfect. Now, of course, you can adjust the grid to your liking, and maybe a bit like this. One thing that's important is that the layer is quite big. We're gonna press S for the scale, we're gonna scale it up, and then we're gonna go back into our grid and then move the corner point closer together so the grid is more compact. Something like this would work. Then I'm gonna also move this down, call it grid. Now I'm even going to make the grid bigger in the width because we're going to have to move it later on. So I'm just going to make it really wide. I'm going to move it more to the left like this and just make sure that the corner point and then the first axis is more closer together. So the grid is more like a square, something like this doesn't have to be perfect. Great. Now move it. Now let's move it down to the uh, bottom. I'm going to call this grid. I'm going to press T for the transparency and lower it a bit maybe something like this. I'm gonna make it 3D and I'm gonna press R for rotation and then rotate the X axis. Maybe move it a bit to the left and maybe also move it a bit down, something like this. Now we also want it to fade out and there's multiple ways to do this. We can now pre-compose this grid, but we can also just duplicate the background, put it over it and then just add a mask to this, to the top, something like this and then press F for feather and it will give this really nice mask. I'm gonna move it a bit down by double clicking it because I want it to be something like this, 200. Let's see what this looks like. And yeah, this is exactly the effect that we're looking for. Beautiful. And because we have our grid here, we can even adjust it to be more like spacious or maybe more closer to each other. You can also move the second axis to uh, create more depth to it. And I actually think the bottom layer should be a bit more grayish, maybe a bit lighter. So you can go to layer solid settings, change it to maybe a bit lighter. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. I'm gonna go crazy first. So that looks great. I'm gonna increase the feather even more. And I'm really happy with this. Now if we go back to our example, as you can see, there's also these top bars and the animation is actually really easy. Just comes in and to create this, I'm gonna show you really quickly how I would do it. I would just use the rounded rectangle tool and then I will just drag it over and you can change the roundness here in older versions of After Effects you need to go into the rectangle uh, but on the right we can just change it. There we go and you can of course add a drop shadow by right clicking layer styles and then drop shadow. Now, I think you've waited long enough let's just animate everything. I'm gonna start with the bus stop. I think it's a bit too big. I'm gonna press S to scale it down. Let's move it over and let's just move it all the way to the right. Something like here. And then I'm gonna add a new null object. So layer new null object. Link the grid and the bus stop sign to the null object. So they're parented. I'm gonna press P for position. And that means that everything we do with the null object also applies to these layers. And the thing is, is that the bus stop will also be at the same spot as you can see, even though it's not 3D, you don't have to make objects 3D if you don't need to, it will save a lot of render time. And then we can just keyframe the position, go a bit further and then move it by holding shift. So it like moves more. You can align it, make sure that the bus stop sign is at the right spot, then select the last keyframe, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's open our curve editor so we can really slow it down. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, maybe it's a bit slowed down too much. It's fine to adjust it a bit and like see what looks good. 
It's fine if it slows down a bit. Yeah, this is perfect. This is beautiful, guys. Oh my God, this makes me so happy. <laughs> Let's now see if we can add the bus. So just gonna turn the bus on. Make sure that the bus stop sign is above the other layers. And then since we linked the man to the bus, we can just only move the bus. I'm just gonna press P for position, move this over, and I'm gonna move it in. Now this is really harsh as you can see. And also I want it to be first a bit too far. So basically like maybe something like that and then move back just like in the animation. Let's right click those keyframes, easy ease, open the curve editor. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit by pressing this button on the bottom. You can really dial it down, maybe just selecting this keyframe and make sure that it basically like slows down a bit. I'm gonna, I'll just move this keyframe out a bit. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I really like this. I think we're gonna go for this. Now, of course, if you uh, turn on the motion blur, it will look even better. Now, I'm already really happy with this. Of course, the bus is a different color, but that's not the big issue. I do see that the man is a bit static uh, and we can move him. We can do that using the corner pin tool, but I can also just add a turbulent displacement to him alone. Uh, so there's some movement in him. And that's why we also separated the layer earlier on. You can just use a turbulent displace for this. Of course, make sure that the size is not too big, maybe even on the lowest setting and then see what it looks like. Mm, not the biggest fan. That's also because of the amount. Maybe change that to 20. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's better. So there's some movement in it. You can also rotate it uh, if you want to. And then we can use an expression for this or you can just keyframe the evolution at the beginning and then maybe at the end of the composition uh, two times. Let's go out of our graph editor and yeah, maybe increase the amount a bit to 30. Press U to see all your keyframes. And then, yeah, I, I would like this. I think I'm happy with this. Now, if you add everything together, you will get something like this. The film grain, you can just download in the asset pack. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Leave a comment on what you want to see next. And then a big thank you to all of you guys that supported me from the start. I'm so happy with it. I said it before, but I love creating these videos. Then thanks for watching and then I'll see you next time. Bye.